I have two terms here. I have two x and I have negative four. We always want to try to make our biggest term positive. That's typically the biggest exponent. So that would be the first term in this case. I try to look at the numbers first. I have a two and I have a four. The greatest number that divides into both of them would be two. Then I look for variables. My first one has an X. My second one has no variables, which means your GCF in this case is only two. So when I factor a two from two X, I'm left with, when I factor a two from a negative four, I'm gonna be left with negative two. Remember, it's undoing the distributive property. So really what we want to be thinking about is when I take a two out, what am I going to need to multiply it by to get back to two X and then to get back to negative four. So when I do my check, here's my answer, two times X minus two, I go ahead and I distribute. So two times X is two X, two times negative two is negative four which is what we started with, we're good. That's our final answer. When I look at my second problem, I'm gonna focus on my numbers first. Once again, I have two terms. Negative nine X cubed is my bigger term because it's got an X to the third. You can look at this and you can say that 9 and 12 are both divisible by 3. The only problem with that is then this first term would remain a negative. So I want to take out a negative 3. Both terms also contain x's. Remember, x to the third is basically x times x times x and then just 12x. So they both have one x in common. I'm going to take out a negative 3x. When I do this, I take negative 3 from negative 9. That leaves me with positive 3 because if I were to redistribute, negative 3 times 3 would bring me back to negative 9. You've taken 1x from x cubed. That means you have 2 left. So that's x squared. I take out the negative 3 from negative 12. That becomes positive 4. And then I take the x from the x. So really you're left with one, but it's not necessary to include that times one. We just leave it as plus four. All right, and then we wanna do our check. So I'm gonna rewrite my problem. And I'm gonna distribute negative three, times positive three is negative nine. X times X squared is X cubed. Negative three times four is negative 12. X times just itself is X. It's what we started with originally. We can box in our answer. All right, to make it a little bit more challenging, I have added a third term. And another variable. So I am going to start with my numbers. I have 50, 60, and 60. Each of those numbers is divisible by 10. I'm then going to look at my variables. A cubed. There are three a's there. The second term has a squared. There are two a's there. And the third term has just an a, which means I can take out one a from each term. Then we move on to b. Typically, I do the order of the numbers, and then I do the variables in alphabetical order to make sure that I don't miss anything. The first one has b squared, so that's two b's. The second one has a B, so that's one B. And the third one has a B. So I can actually take out an A 
and a b. From the first term, 50 divided by 10 is going to give me 5. I've taken 1a away. That means I have 2 left. And I've taken 1b away. That means I have 1 there. From the middle term, 10 out of 60 is going to be 6. I take 1a away, so I'm left with 6a. And I take that b away, so there's no b in that second term anymore. And from the third term, I'm going to take out the 10 again. That's going to leave me with negative 6. I take out the A, so it's no longer there. I take out the B, so it's no longer there. So we want to do our check. As you learn more challenging types of factoring, the check part is going to become increasingly more important. So first term, 10 times 5 is 50. A times A squared is A cubed. B times B is B squared. Multiply by the middle term. 10 times 6 is 60. A times A is A squared. And then I bring the B back in as well. And then by the third term, 10 times negative 6 is negative 60. Bring in the AB, which is what we started with. We are good on that one as well. And lastly, and probably the most challenging problem that we have today, you're going to see why in a minute. I have three terms. I'm focusing on my numbers first 12. 18 and 6 are all divisible by 6. The first term has an n cubed, that's n times n times n. The middle term has an n squared, that's n times n. And the final term has an n, which means I can take out 1n from each of these. When I do this from the first term, 6 out of 12 is going to give us 2. I take 1n away, and I'm left with n squared. From the middle term, 6 out of 18 is negative 3. I take an n away, negative 3n. Now, the biggest mistake that I see people make is they look and they say, oh, I'm taking out 6n from 6n. So that means there's nothing left there and I close my parentheses. This is wrong. If you were to leave this as your final answer and redistribute to check it, 6n times 2n squared would give us 12n cubed. 6n times negative 3n would give us negative 18n squared. But that's not your original problem because your original problem had three terms in it. If you start with three terms, you need to remain with three terms inside the parentheses. You never, ever say that you've taken everything out. Even if your GCF is that term, remember, it's undoing the distributive property. You need a placeholder here. Think about it. 6 divided by 6 is not 0. 6 divided by 6 is 1. You need a placeholder of 1 whenever that happens. That is probably the biggest mistake I see students make when they are factoring. So now that I have my placeholder, we can check this. So 6n times 2n squared, that's going to give us 12n cubed. 6n times negative 3n, that's negative 18n squared. And then 6n times 1 is positive 6n. Remember, the checking is so important because of that key mistake that I just showed you. If you don't check, you probably wouldn't have realized that was an issue. We see that they match. We 
we see that we factored correctly.